Today on the Joy of Editing, it's the Detail Extractor Filter found in Nick Color Effects, part of the Nick Collection 7. Let's check it out. Stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Today it is the Detail Extractor Filter. Now I really enjoy this filter because you can pop out a lot of really nice detail in your images. And this is something I think you should use near the end of an edit just to pop out some extra detail. It's a great finishing touch. You'll find the Detail Extractor Filter inside of Nick Color Effects. It's part of the Nick Collection 7. If you don't have the Nick Collection 7 yet, I'll have links in the uh, description below. They're my affiliate links. I appreciate it when you use my links. When you use my links, I make a small commission, and this helps me to keep tutorials coming your way. So thank you all when you use my links. I really appreciate it. The first thing we need to do is launch Nick Color Effects. Now, there's a couple of different ways you can do it. You can come up here to Filter and find the Nick Collection 7 and click on Nick Color Effects. Or the other way is you can come up to File, come down and find Automate, and then look for Nick Collection 7 Palette. Give that a click, and you can launch Nick Color Effects from here. But you'll notice all of the different Nick Collection 7 software lives right inside of the Nick Collection 7 palette. And now I'm going to go ahead and click on Nick Color Effects. And here we are inside of Nick Color Effects. Now I'm looking for the Detail Extractor Filter. And I really enjoy the new search bar that they've added because I believe there's over like, I think at least 55 different filters in here. There's a lot. And we can come to the search bar and just type in, for instance, I'll just start typing in detail, D-E-T-A-I-L. And then you can see, oh, there we go. There's the detail extractor filter. I'll click the plus and we'll add the detail extractor and let's get started. Now, you'll notice the Detail Extractor Filter right here, and you see the little checkbox right here. I'm going to uncheck it. This will show us there's the before, and let me check it again. This is the after, but look at all that detail. Now, I want to do some fine-tuning here, and I'm going to work with these new luminosity masks, which really help you to really just apply this to where you want it on this image. And I can use multiple detail extractor filters, but let me show you what I mean. Now, right now I'm looking at the sky and what I want to do is see where it says effect radius. I'm going to go through these. It defaults at normal. Let's go to fine. I'll just hover over fine and you can see how the image looks different. That's fine. This is normal and this is large. And I think I like large the best. So I'm going to click on large. Now remember, I'm only looking at the sky and I think the large effect radius looks good for the clouds. And now what I want to do is use a luminosity mask. So I'm going to click on the luminosity mask button and I'm going to click some of the lighter tones up here in the sky, like right here. And that's where that luminosity mask will sit right there. Now, do you see right here where it's white and black? I can feather this. In other words, if I come down to the bottom here, see this little, I don't know what you want to call it. Let's call it like a little arrow type thing, little box with a point on the top. I'm going to click on here and drag this to the right just so I encompass all these tones in here. Like right now, I'm right around like seven and I'm getting eight, nine, and 10. I'm feathering out, right? And I just may feather the left side where it's black right here, a little bit to the left. Not too much, but a little bit to the left. See how it's picking up this cloud right here? Watch when I drag it to the right. See how that cloud drops out? It gets a little darker when I drag it over to the left. Now what's happening here, this is the area that I've selected, the mask area. And if I click right here, we can actually see the mask itself. The darker areas of the mask will be getting less of the adjustment, but the lighter areas will be getting more of the adjustment. And that's really good. And I'm pretty much encompassing the entire sky, dropping out the foreground with this setting right here. And now if I click on this button again, we can see the image back. Now let me shut off the detail extractor. I'm going to uncheck it right here by clicking on here. Here is before and here is after, but you see how I'm bringing out all that nice sky detail. Now let's work on the foreground. Now there are a lot of darker tones in the foreground. So what we're going to do is click on the plus to add another detail extractor, okay? We're gonna use another luminosity mask. 
Now, before I get to the luminosity mask, I'm looking at this grass, and what I want to do is, again, with the effect radius, I want to go through and see which one I like the best. Here is fine, here is normal, and here is large. And I think this time I'll go with normal, so I'll click on normal. And then next, I'll click on the luminosity mask button, and I think I'm going to click like right about here. I think this is the tone I want. Now let me shut this off. Here's before and here's after. See how it's only affecting the foreground of the image? It doesn't appear to be affecting the sky. Now remember, we can click this button, we can see the mask, and notice the sky area is black, meaning it's not even getting any of the detail extraction. Now I can still make some further adjustments while we're in this mask view, so I'm going to take the right side of the bottom feather adjustment right here, and drag it to the right a little bit. See how the sky is starting to pop back in, which is not what I want. So I'm going to pull this over just so that sky drops out. Now I'm going to see if I can bring some more shadow area in. So I'm going to take the bottom of this slider and start to drag it to the left. And see how that whole area is getting lightened up. And if I want to go more into shadows, I can even take this side of the slider, the left side up at the top, and drag it to the left a little bit. See how that's getting lighter? I'll get more of a detail extraction effect in this area. Now if I click this button again, we can see the image back. Now let's take a look at the before and after. I'm just going to shut off this detail extractor. So here's before and here is after. Now we can also work with contrast and remember the luminosity mask is only going to affect the foreground area so let me give it a little bit more contrast. I'm going to drag the contrast slider to the right just to give it some extra contrast right about there I think that looks good and let's give it a little bit more saturation to somewhere right about there. Now let's see before and after. Here is before and now here is after and I think that looks really good. And now I'm going to come up to the top detail extractor layer and I'm going to click on my luminosity mask button and click on luminosity mask one. And there you can see my setting. But I want you to notice I have this opacity adjustment. And if I feel the effects too strong in the sky, let me shut this off. Here's before and here's after. Yeah, I think that effects a little too strong in the sky. So I'm going to take the opacity and drag this back a little bit just to, you know, like ease that off a little bit. Now let me shut off the detail extractor for the sky. Here's before and here's after, and I think that looks really good. Now let's look at an overall before and after. Now we can click this compare button. Just left click with your mouse and hold it down. There's before and there's after. Or you could click this button and now you can get a split screen. So if I drag this to the right, that's before. And if I drag it to the left, if you look on the right side, that's after. You can see that. Isn't that nice? It brings out all that beautiful detail. Or else you could click this button and you could see the image on the bottom is after detail extraction and the image on the top is before. So I'm really happy with my results. Now, before I send this back into Photoshop, I highly recommend that you check on Convert to Smart Object. Just click on that. See the little check mark? That means that if we have any kind of an issue that we need to come back and readjust this, we could send this back into color effects and make some readjustments with the detail extractor. So that's an important thing to do to check that on before you save this back to Photoshop. And now to save this back to Photoshop, I'll just click apply and that'll send us right back into Photoshop. And here we are back inside of Photoshop now. The Nick Collection 7 palette is in the way, so if you click the minus button, you'll hide it down here in Photoshop. And if you click right here, you will open it back up. So I'm just going to put it down there, get it out of the way. And now here's my Nick 7 color effects layer. You'll notice it is a smart filter. I could double click Nick 7 color effects and go right back in and make some adjustments if I need to. But let me shut this layer off. Here is before. This is without the detail extraction. And now let me turn it back on. Here is after. Isn't that beautiful? I highly recommend that you try this detail extractor out on all of your images, especially like landscape images. You can pop some beautiful detail. And I usually wait till I get to the end of an edit before I want to try this. But give it a try. I think you will like it. Well, there it is, the detail extractor found in Nick Color Effects, part of the Nick Collection 7. If you enjoyed today's tutorial, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe, click that bell notification icon, 
and click all so that you'll receive all notifications. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Cully. And I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.